I took this website, which not only looked bad, but also lost money for the business, and I turned it into this in about 25 minutes. And by the end of this video, you will also know not only how to make websites look better, but also how to make them more strategic and valuable. Let's go. So let's start off with what's wrong with this website. And I'm going to focus on the hero section, although there are other things on this website that we can talk about. But the hero section is really important because most people are lost here. If the, if the website is not clear in about 15 seconds, you lose them here. So what do we have here? We have an explainer video playing here on mute. So not only do I not understand what the explainer video is talking about, because I have no context, I can't hear it. It's distracting me from actually reading the text. So the problem problem here is that this company Data Ninja probably is doing something so complicated that they couldn't find a way to visualize it so that they're trying to give me to watch a, a three minute video, but I don't understand it. if I'm not getting it very, very quickly, I'm lost. And so we have to find a way to very, very quickly visualize what the value proposition is here, what they're doing. And, and, and get people to interested and understand that this is for them. If they want, they can then watch a video or request a demo, but we have to find a better way to visualize things. Again, we have a video that's going in the background. There's another image showing maybe a QR or a manufacturing floor. And then the other thing that's wrong here besides this thing is we have this news here that's grabbing a lot of attention, but it's just news and I don't even know what the company is doing. So why look at the news first thing? And then they have, look at this trusted with traceability they're working with spacex with with buyer with nature value they have amazing clients that trust them but they're hiding it behind the fold so i'm not getting to see this so let's see how we're going to fix this so first thing i'm jumping into uh, i'm jumping into figma and i recreated the website with just no uh, image in the background now here's what i'm thinking for the image this is manufacturing basically they have a cloud service that gives you analytics and so let's show the actual persona that's going to buy this let's show the manufacturing manager working in the factory or something like this with some kind of a tablet and maybe you can visualize all the graphs and all the information that's coming to them so if I would be working with them, we can maybe go ahead and shoot somebody, um, you know, or create some kind of a visualization. But because I'm trying to do this really quick, I'm going to jump into Shutterstock and a look for images that I can really quickly working with. So I'm going to search for manufacturing manager tablet, and I get a lot of images. Now, what I'm going to try to look for. And I'm going to, while I'm scrolling, I'm just going to open up a bunch of tabs in the background just so that I can have multiple options here. I'm looking for an image that shows the person, but also have space in the, the in the image where I can overlay text on top of it and you know the text is still going to be readable. So I'm always opening up a bunch of options. I'm going to see if there's anything that's looking good. And the nice thing here is that if I have an image that I like, I can see other images from the same photo shoot until I find an image that looks well. And now before I'm even downloading it, I can just copy it into my Figma just to see that in terms of layout, um, it's going to look well. And I think, you know, putting this as a background image here, um, I, I'm still going to need to create contrast for the text, but at least they're not overlaying the, the actual people in the photo. So I think this is something that we can work with. So let's go ahead and actually download this image so that we can start working with it. So I'm downloading it and bringing it into Photoshop. Now I do want to bring in some graphs that I can overlay. Now if I would be working with clients, obviously I would take graphs that are relevant to them or from their product. In this case, I'm just going to go into UI8 and download some kind of a dashboard just so that I have a bunch of graphs that I can quickly copy and paste. Um, and now that I've downloaded something to work with, uh, let's start bringing these things into Photoshop. All right, so right here in Photoshop, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the image around and I'm going to separate the people from the background because uh, number one, I want to blur the background and darken it a little bit. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to create a gradient on top of it. I'm going to see what works best, uh, a black gradient or maybe a dark blue gradient. Um, and blur it a little bit. And then I also separate them because the graphs, I want to bring the graphs 
on top of them and behind them to kind of create depth. I think it's really cool to make it look as if it's part of the image itself. So let's export some graphs here and let's copy and paste them. Some of them I'm going to reduce the opacity and you can see I'm bringing them behind them just so that you can feel the depth in here. Some of them I'm going to, to put on top of them and blur them a little bit as if you know the, the camera was uh, focused on them, not on the graphs. Then it, it gives this a little bit of the effect of uh, depth. And uh, let's bring in a QR code because they're manufacturing. And they, one of the features was something with QR. Now I'm going to give these elements a little bit of a shadow so that they actually feel again like they're depth. They're putting shadows on the characters and on one of the others. So it looks a little bit more photorealistic. And uh, yeah, I think the image is pretty much ready, which means I can now go ahead and copy that and bring it into Figma. And inside Figma, now I can start seeing whether you know the image looks good, uh, whether we have space for the text. And I can see that mm, right now we still need to work on it a little bit because the text doesn't have enough contrast. So let's make the image smaller a little bit. I still think we're going to need to blur the background uh, way more. So let's go ahead and darken the gradient and blur the background more until I feel like there's good contrast with the background. One of the key things with websites is, you know, the text is not contrasted enough from the background. Now, let's make the background of the website dark blue instead of white. I think this would look good. Uh, dark blue, in general, I think I'm going to get rid of the red in this website and just keep it blue. Blue is very kind of like solid for corporates and then this is definitely in manufacturing. So I think single color of blue and dark blue, it's gonna work well here. Now the other things, because I uh, got rid of the video, let's add another button here. Um, let's add kind of a ghost button that says watch a demo or a 90 seconds explainer video. So if people do want to watch the video, they can still do this, but if they choose to do this, of course. So let's put the button here. And um, yeah, now we can go ahead and maybe add the logos. So I'm going to take the logos into Photoshop so I can invert them because I want to bring them as white logos. And I'm gonna start positioning them here. Showing the logos, especially cool logos like they have here is really, really powerful. And if you, you can get them to fit within the hero section and make them visible before people scroll, I think it's really, really powerful. So it's gonna help us gain trust. I have a space for one or two logos more, I think. Gonna make sure that the uh, button on the navigation is also an actual button. And uh, yeah, pretty much I think we are done. And that is that. I'm going to just play around with the layout just a little tiny more, just to make sure that we have space for everything. And again, the text is not too close to the actual image. And uh, yeah. Now this looks quite well. Okay, so this is the end result that we came out with. Now, the three things that I want you to take away from this videos are, number one, you have to make the hero section communicate very, very fast. The image there need to instantly communicate who is this for and basically what is the value proposition. Number two, you have to get rid of distractions. So you have to ruthlessly prioritize what's going to be visible and what's not, or at least what's on the top section and what can be shown later on down the page. And number three, you want to build trust as fast as possible. So if you've got powerful logos or testimonials or something like this, make sure you show them first. All right, if you want to learn more about this process, if you want to dive deeper, we have free workshop and courses and you can find them below this video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.